Dry fire, our dirty little secret. Dry fire is the simulated firing of a weapon without any live ammunition. And for those of us that want to become more proficient on the range, the work that we do off the range can do a lot for improving our skills. And there's a lot of ways that we can dry fire and it doesn't have to be monotonous or boring. There are a lot of different tools that we can use that we have available to us now that can train dis different aspects of our fundamentals. We have lasers and, and sensors and airsoft pistols. I'm gonna talk about the different tools that I've picked up and the ones that I used to train my fundamentals. As usual, if you came here for something specific, there are chapter markers down below uh, in the video so you can find what you're looking for. So if you like my channel, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. If you don't, go ahead and go ahead and hit that dislike button twice for good measure. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. There's something to be said for cold start drills and tracking your standards without a warm up. If you ever have to use your EDC, you probably won't be warmed up. But generally when you get to the range, it's a good idea to do a little bit of dry fire to recall some of your fundamentals and get warmed up. So when I get to the range, I like to throw my gear on and go through some basic movements. Dry fire can also be used to help overcome deficiencies. One of my favorite drills is the flinch drill, where you load a magazine, chamber around, and drop the magazine. You fire twice. The first shot being live fire, the second shot being a dry fire exercise. This can quickly help you overcome a, a flinch if you're hitting low on the target. There's a lot of ways you can incorporate dry fire into your training at the range. It's a useful tool if you take the time to use it. So aside from warming up before your range session, all the other dry fire can be done inside. And quick safety note, if you are using your actual firearm, and especially if you're practicing reloads, it's a good idea not to have any loaded magazines or other ammunition around you while you do this. And of course, follow all the firearm safety tenants. I think one of the best ways that dry fire helps people is just playing with their equipment and getting familiarized with their guns. Familiarization of the controls and weapon handling, and that being said, the first dry fire tool requires nothing at all, just your pistol. And with nothing except your pistol, you can practice your draw, your presentation, your side alignment, movement, everything you could practice on the range except grip and trigger management and tracking the sights to recoil. I'll usually start by putting a piece of tape or an index card across the room and working on draw and presenting to the target. But you can do the same thing with something in your house like the corner of a picture frame, uh, a light switch plate uh, or a door handle or I mean, be creative. This is really good to work on your trigger pull and it forces you to slow down a little bit because there's no gratification from, from steel or anything like that, but that can be a good thing. So once you dry fire your pistol, you'll have to pull the slide back at least a few millimeters to reset the trigger again. If you want to ramp things up a little bit, putting a piece of cardboard between the slide and the barrel will keep your firearm out of battery and allow you to pull the trigger continuously. This doesn't have the function, break, and reset of a standard trigger, but it does allow you to continue working on different aspects of your fundamentals without getting too used to or developing a bad habit of firing one shot and racking the slide to fire again. So with those tools, you'll be able to set up a similar course of fire just as you would at the range, but you don't have a way to quantify your hits and know if you're being accurate as well as proficient. So the first tool that I like to recommend is a laser. This one right here is made by Pink Rhino. Uh, I think they're made by Mantis, but all the ones I've had have really been about the same. These lasers drop right into your chamber and are held in place and centered by these rubber gaskets. So if you're doing one shot at a time, this lets you work on more aspects of your shooting at the same time. 
instead of just working on your trigger pull or aspects of your draw and side alignment, you can validate those fundamentals when you pull the trigger with this momentary laser. So one of the best uses for this is it allows you to train muscle memory the same way you would at the range with repetition and proper side alignment. And it helps with tracking your metrics. So if you're working on your draw or pushing out from compressed ready to your first shot, you can start to call good hits with this. And if you're using a range timer or a range timer app, you can start to measure your progress and track your metrics to make progress at home. The next tool that I really turn out to like is this guy right here. This is the Mantis X. It's an older version that I've had for a little over two years now, but it mounts to your pistol via a rail or they have magazine base plate adapters if you're drawing from a non light compatible holster or if your gun doesn't have a wide enough mounting surface. And this isn't dry fire specific. This has modes to work with any firing mode, live fire, uh, dry fire, and I think it has an option for CO2. So this tracks how well you pull the trigger and it gives you a composite score out of 100. It tells you what it thinks your discrepancy is and offers you suggestions to fix that particular issue. And it tracks your trigger and your pistol movement before you pull the trigger, during your trigger pull, and your follow through to diagnose things that can affect your trigger pull and putting lead down range. So when I first got this, I have expected to have this thing gratified just how good of a shooter I was, but uh, that didn't happen. The more you know, the more you know you don't know. So, But it did help tighten up my groups and give me a more consistent trigger pull and follow through. And I'm not sponsored by Mantis, I just like this thing. I don't use it all the time. It's actually probably the least piece of used kit that I have, but it definitely has its place and it's good to revisit every now and then to just validate where you're at or keep track of any new discrepancies that might have arisen out of your training. The last piece of kit I use for dry fire I've come to like by far the most, and that's this guy right here. It's a Glock 19X by Umarex. It uses rechargeable green gas magazines and it has the same capacity as a, a full-size Glock frame, 17 rounds. It's a Glock clone, so I can use all of my existing Glock 19 or Glock 45 holsters. But what this offers that I've come to like so much is it's the closest simulation to live fire practice I can get in the house. The gun is of a similar weight to a stock Glock and it has a reciprocating slide, albeit they're both a little bit lighter, a lot lighter. But it does allow you to practice slide lock reloads. It has a trigger that resets. And most importantly, you can track your sights through courses of fire through recoil. It's also pretty powerful and pretty accurate. So you can penetrate these USPSA cardboard targets and work on almost all of your fundamentals in a slightly minor capacity indoors for next to no cost after the in initial investment of the pistol, obviously. When it comes to dry fire, there truly is something for everybody. I know a lot of people who couldn't get out and shoot in the last couple of years because they couldn't find ammo, they didn't have ammo. And while there obviously isn't a perfect substitute for live fire, I like to look at all of these tools as training aids that can augment my training and make me a better shooter. And honestly, I think if I would have taken all the time I spent doing dry fire and used it in live fire on the range, I don't know if it would have gotten me any further than I have. So if you're limited on time or you're limited on money or you can't get to the range every week, these are some tools that can help you maintain some of your proficiency because marksmanship is a perishable skill. So keep at it. See you next time.